Hey everybody, it's Big Mike from Dream Catchers Fishing Supply. We're gonna, today we're gonna be doing a recessed trolling motor pedal on this nitro boat. There's several things that we need to kind of take in consideration before we ever actually cut in a recessed trolling motor pedal. One of them is the structure that exists up underneath the boat. Not every boat can do uh, a recessed trolling motor pedal. Some can do it, but you have to add some structure up underneath here. So uh, in this boat, what we've done is we've opened up uh, the, the rod lockers and whatnot, and we have actually seen some of the um, some of the structure that's underneath here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that phone around for you. So as we can see from down inside of here, our structure travels all the way up inside of there to be able to get that, um, to make sure we're not gonna have a big dip in that front deck. And this goes on both sides. So the structure goes on both sides of that, uh, of that uh, where the recessed pedal is gonna go. Next, we wanna go ahead and reach up inside of there and kind of make sure that there's, uh, there's structure on the bottom. You know, make sure we've got the thickness. You know, a lot of these boats have a tendency to be way too thin. Here, we've got about an inch and a quarter thickness in this deck. And as I reach all the way up inside of this box here, I can feel that thickness stays about the same all the way through. Okay, so we've got the recessed pedal and what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that it is straight. The last thing you wanna do is have a crooked pedal up there and then you got your foot in this thing and it's crooked all the time. So we set it on the boat and then from the back side here, we're gonna make sure it aligns correctly all the way down the boat. Again, if it's crooked, it's gonna be all kinds of kooky and wompy and we don't wanna have that. We wanna have that thing nice and straight. We wanna be centered on the boat. We wanted to make it just super easy to be able to use from either side because when the trolling motor is deployed, We've got plenty of room on both sides. So we've got it straight right now. So it's in the position that we want it when it's completely flipped over. But what we have to do is what we're, we're gonna take and we, you know, a lot of guys will just measure left and right and they'll get their square. And that's fine. You can go ahead and measure, do the Pythagorean theorem. You can do all this crazy stuff or you can just keep it really simple, okay? So I move this and you can see I've got a mark here and here on each side so that when I cut this, it goes, you know, this, the sides are gonna fit right down inside of it. Then I move it forward and I also add those dots there, okay? Once I've got the, the side to side, now I'm gonna move it to the side and mark the same thing. You see the front of this pedal, this has to be down inside of the boat and this has to be down inside of the boat. So I made my marks on each side, okay? Go to the other side, do the same exact thing. Make marks so that we can figure out what that is. Then, using your recessed trolling motor pedal, effectively, you're gonna go ahead and stripe a line with a marker right on the carpet, okay? Same thing, just go from point to point, and you're making your marks. You can see that I've already done this. I'm just darkening them up on each side. It's super easy to do. You know, guys get out here with squares and measuring tapes and there's all kinds of craziness that goes on with these things, you know, but in effect, we're just making a square on the bottom of the deck and I just gotta make sure this goes in. Now it has maneuverability left and right, so I don't have to worry about, um, I really don't have to worry about getting uh, whether that cutout is perfectly square because I do have some tolerance in there. What I do need to make sure is that it's just straight, straight down the boat, and everything will work fine. Now, this customer here in the future is gonna be adding a, a, a trolling motor uh, bridge mount, um, and what, that, what that's gonna do is gonna put electronics kind of up here. So I wanna make sure that I leave some space here. I don't drive this all the way to the front. We've got enough room to be able to add that reset, uh, add the, uh, um, the bridge mount and put that electronics on without any problems in the future, okay? So we're just gonna make one last and final check, make sure everything is good. Looks good to me. Let's go ahead and cut it out. Ready? So there's three different kinds of tools that you can use to cut this thing out, right? If you've got a saw blade on a grinder, you can certainly use that. It is my least preferred because it's kind of dangerous and it doesn't have very good stability and you rely on yourself to cut it. So this is the least favorite, but it will work. The second one is a fine tool or a uh, just a, a, a small reciprocating saw that I could actually dig into and cut. The problem with this is it doesn't offer me a lot of blade distance or make a straight line. So it ends up being all crooked. The best option here is to actually do a skill saw, 
or a circular saw. And what we do is we cut from corner to corner and then come back with the defying tool and be able to cut those corners out so we can collapse and pull this out of the center, okay? Let's go ahead and get cutting. Cut it out very nicely uh, from corner to corner. There's still going to be an area on each corner that needs to get cut out in order for us to be able to finish this cut. But I'm going to go ahead and cut all four sides here and then we're going to cut it out. You'll see that there's a rod locker uh, arm that's going to come up here, just up here, and then we're going to have to cut that out with a fine tool to make sure that our, our, uh, our recess tray will fit in. <laughs> you can go ahead and stop it. Okay, so we've got, we've got the whole piece cut out except for the corners. We're gonna go ahead and cut these corners and then we're gonna go ahead and get it to, to pry out of there. Remember, we don't we didn't necessarily cut all the way down because there's other things. There could be wires and stuff up underneath here. We felt, we didn't feel any wires, so we should be good to go here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these corners out and then we'll see what happens. thickness that's going on here. This is a solid chunk of fiberglass that we just pulled out of there. So this is going to be a very sturdy front deck piece when we're all said and done. And you can see there's a there's the boxes here and boxes here. This actually helps to provide just a little bit of structure for the recessed pedal as, as, it, uh, as it goes down in there. Let's go ahead and check it for fit. Recessed pedal. Just like that. Now we'll go ahead and screw it down. We'll clean it up. We'll make sure that the the, uh, the, the foot pedal fits down inside of there, which we've already checked clearly to begin with. And uh, we'll get a good vacuum on it and we'll have a happy customer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drop this down in here. We're gonna start pre-drilling some holes for this to be able to get down inside of it. Yeah, the, uh, the correct size screws to be able to put onto this, okay? So I'm using a number eight, three quarter of an inch. You can always get a bigger, but you can't ever go smaller. So once you drill something out, you better make sure that it is exactly what you need, okay? So I'm looking at my head size. That's a great size here. If the customer wants to go with a size 10, he can go with a size 10 too, but this is not gonna go through as we look at the as we look at the depth that this is going to travel, it's going to go down into it, you know, approximately that far. I'm not going to go down through here just in case anything else goes on. And again, I can always add longer. I can always add thicker, but I can never go smaller from when I start. So I'm going to start with a small screw first. In the future, if the customer has any issues, it gives him the option to go with a larger screw to be able to hold differently if, it, if something should ever happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in. Let's go ahead and size up a drill bit that we need for this guy here to be able to get a good starter hole going. Okay, we got the first one drilled out. Now, there is almost no play in this. We cut that super, super tight, which is, again, that's a great thing to do, but we, we always have plenty of room. Notice, you can't see the black lines that are going anywhere. I've got pre-drilled hole. Now these are stainless steel screws, 
but they're still fragile, okay? So I don't wanna just bear down on this. So I wanna make sure that I drill this out so that I get a good bite. If I don't, if I just said, hey, I'm just gonna drill this out, I run the risk of actually breaking a head off of this and then it's gonna be create a problem because then I have to go through an extraction process to get this back out because this is in such a good place right now that I don't wanna to have to redo this thing, okay? So now that we've got one in there, everything's tight, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill all the holes all over the place. So some of you are wondering, you know, what are the holes that are here? Well, there's water holes that are inside of here. Down inside of here is access to the bilge. As soon as the water drips down through here, because you don't want this puddle, uh, pedal to fill up with water, you want water to be able to get down inside of here. It gets down here, goes into the bilge, goes all the way to the back so that it can be, you know, sent out of the boat uh, when you're pulling it off the water or through a pump. So that all that's gonna go through here is water. That's all that's gonna happen. The, pedals, pedal, the pedal, when it goes in here, is gonna cover all of these holes, so you're never gonna see any of this. And we're just gonna go ahead and fasten it down to the actual bottom of this. Let's go ahead and finish up with these screws. Okay, so, some people are wondering, hey, you know, you're putting this thing in there using an impact. Aren't you gonna cut, it? aren't you gonna break that? So look, the impact starts to go and it starts to get very difficult. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull it back out and drive it right back down, okay? And it'll send it right through. You can choose to send it fast and hard and risk breaking that screw, or you can just get it down a little bit, let that impact start to hit it a little bit, back off and then go right down. It'll go right in, okay? That one went right in, no problem. If it's, you start running into uh, any resistance, you wanna stop immediately. That one went in, no problem. Back it off and then go right back in. No problem. Okay, got a little bit of resistance right here. I'm gonna pull that off, go a little bit, put it right back in. All right, so we've got the pedal. We've put the pedal down inside of here. Notice you can't see any of the holes in there anymore, okay? But that doesn't mean that this just screws to those holes. We've gotta be able to tap these, these, uh, this, these holes out. So we gotta get our self-tappers. These are just inch and a quarters. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna self-tap. This is a metal, um, metal recessed tray. Some are fiberglass, some are you know, different things. If you got a fiberglass, go ahead and pre-drill it. This one comes with a pre-drilled head on top of it. So we're just gonna screw right down through that right when, when we got it in position, okay? One thing you need to make sure of when you're getting into position is as I move this head around, you can see the foot pedal changing its direction, okay? Saying how high it is, how high it is. So when, when we've got the, the, the recess pedal in one direction, we can't put all the screws in every spot. So what I'm doing is I'm balancing that trolling motor up so that I can go ahead and get the screw here. If the recess pedal is up, I can't access that hole very well. It also helps to have the correct tool, okay? This here, I can get in there. This here, I can get in there even better. This is just the long extension piece, the number two Phillips, put it all the way down inside of there. Guys, you do not have to suck the air out of this thing. Get it down there, the impact takes over, you hear it clicking a few times, this pedal is not going anywhere. All we have to do is just simply put a, a few screws in it to make sure that it's down. It's, there's three spots, all three spots will be the same exact way. Okay, it's pretty simple. And the last screw is right there at the heel. And this is one you really can't access from anywhere unless you have a long, uh, a long number two bit to be able to get into in there. And that's it. Recess pedal is now installed. It won't come out in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's a it's a pretty simple install. Most people, the biggest problem with is that just they have a problem with cutting into their boat. Don't be afraid to do something. You know, if you if you're afraid to do something, you're never going to succeed. It's just I can tell you that right now. Um, Give us a shout, Dreamcatchers Fishing Supply, 828-354-0250 if you have any questions at all. Uh, I'm Big Mike, just 
you know, anybody here is qualified to be able to install one of these things. We've got great employees. Just ask anybody, hey, how do I do this? They can talk you through it over the phone. When you do call, please have an open mind about what we're talking about, okay? Thanks. See you next time.